During this week's council workshop, you mentioned that a staff member was playing with numbers regarding ba uh, bus patronage. How do you think this type of thing impacts on, uh, I suppose, public trust in the council? It said that bus patronage had gone up um, on the Lincoln Road bus lanes 55% um, since 2010. And I said, but bus lanes have only been in a year, so you should be looking at the numbers straight before, just from one year to the other. Not way back, you could go back to 1840 when no one was using a bus, 100% increase. So we're yeah. just going to make sure we're, we're not playing with numbers to make them look better than they actually are. But that also, I mean, that does come down to public trust, doesn't it? And that's something that we hear time and time again, that the lack of trust when you've got, you know, potentially staff members that are uh, deviating to what they should be. And I want to point to something else, actually, I just reminded myself of. So, I mean, councillors were cautioned by staff to avoid expressing personal opinions or heavily weighing public feedback on the intensification plan recently, right? Because it could go into legal issues. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes me think that, well, given that, is it appropriate for staff members to be publicly talking about the benefits of higher intensification housing. You know, they did that Christchurch conference or that Christchurch talk recently where you had the principal advisor of urban development uh, advocating for intensification. I, I mean, uh, how can she get away with doing that and councillors aren't allowed to speak about we're, it? We're very cheerful because, yeah, we're, we're, we've got to be see that we're not predetermined. Otherwise, you get a judicial review and you, you, you get booted out. And it just is cost an absolute a defaulting to get to this point. And I must say, just to, for everyone out there, um, the government is the one that made the rules, made us use independent hearings panel. So we had to go by the rules to to put it through. We would have loved to do it at a, a lot lower sort of um, power, so to speak, and it would have saved a shed load of money. Yeah. All right. Um, one of the biggest stories I think we received in terms of feedback, and that was uh, a couple of photos of you and uh, Celeste Donovan and I think Sam McDonald out there with uh, a public tap that is now chlorine free. This raised a lot of um, happy comments, but also people saying, well, how does this process work and why isn't the same approach being used for the rest of the city's water supply? They hate chlorine. What we've done, we've intersected the water, so to speak, before it goes into the chlorine system. And we used a, um, a different system um, of cleansing it, so to speak. Infrared, I think it is, or it might be something else, I'm not quite sure. Yep. Um, so it doesn't have to have chlorine anywhere near it. And it's right next to where the well pops out of the ground. There's a pipe about two metres long. Bang, it goes in there. Uh, we're metering it just for our own advice to know how many people are using it. And if, if, it, if it's really used a lot, we'll throw some more around the city. And I, I think it's great. I think it's great. Is there any chance of getting chlorine removed from all of Christchurch's water supply or is that a is that just not possible now? It, it's it's it is a bridge too far. All our wells are in good nick. They're all above ground. They're all good. Our pumping stations are ninety five percent there. They're all everything's great. We've still got and we still will have uh, water pipes that wear out as as life goes on and we've got leaks and stuff like that. Nowhere near as bad as what they were. We're certainly getting on top of it. But until we can prove that we haven't got any leaks, it's the chances are no at this state, ideally would like to have it out. Um, it, it comes down to the rules that the, the authority, the regulation authority um, tell us that we have to use. And if they decide they want to back off a bit here and there, well and good, but at the moment we're stuck with the rules that we've got. That's a shame though, isn't it? Because residents are calling out for chlorine-free water. Yeah, yeah, it is a shame because all our we've never had anyone crook on the water in Christchurch at all. But this is a way of leaving at it. We've got one in Burnside, we've got one in Keys Road, and I think, and I'd like to cover a report coming back, um, put a couple more over the other side of town, the western side of town, or that sort of horseful way. Got to be careful how you do it because um, you don't just want to have it that people are pulling up on the side of the road and causing um, a bit of a traffic issue. Those other two that I was talking about, they're sitting off the road and people can stay there all day and drink water if they want to. I'm feeling thirsty now. Uh, Phil Major, nice to speak with you. Thanks so much for your time tonight. Good night, man. See you around.